And welcome into Deerfield for Aurora University, taking on Trinity International here this afternoon on a cloudy, chilly, windy day, but no rain for now, but certainly a wet field to play on today. I'm Mark Vasco, Steve Moga here as well, and Steve, as we get set to go, obviously for AU, the big test will be the defense. Can they stop the uh, highly vaunted, you know, John Stark run offense? Well, John Stark is a bona fide professional caliber type of athlete, 6'4", 220, and stands back there with a rifle arm. He's got good foot speed and he's got all the tools you look for in a quarterback and the pro scouts have expressed some interest in him. And he's got about two or three other guys back there on the offensive side of the ball with him who have the talent and ability to play professional football. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Spartans can get some pressure on Stark today and uh, kind of stymie that offense, that potent offense. Well, we'll find out here soon enough as Ross Draper is set to kick. Trinity to receive as they go left to right in front of us. And the kick will be caught at the 12-yard line. The return will be right up the middle for Theo Williams. Now he kicks it out to the right side. Fumble the football. Spartans fall on it at the Trinity 35-yard line. So right away, Spartans catch a break early on. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Boy, what a huge turnover as Cooney comes out of the pile. Actually, that's Patrick Smith, 56, not 55, comes out of the pile with the ball. Again, he was trying to just struggle ahead for a couple extra yards. Not really a whole lot left for uh, Theo Williams to do, but uh, he tried to lunge forward and lost the handle and ball and popped free right in front to the Spartans. So AU going to get things started as they come out on offense. Mark Hancock, the quarterback. Ryan Kennedy and Fonzie Medina split behind the QB. Hannigan and Natividad, the wideouts left, plus a wideout right. And on the first play, handoff off the right side to Kennedy, who gets to the 30-yard line. So picked up five on first down. Good trap blocking up front at the time of the Spartans. But, uh, you know, that that worked better than an onside kick, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. All of a sudden, did. you started at the 35-yard line in good field position. But the Spartans they were a little concerned. Big defensive line for the Trojans, but uh, not the same kind of speed that uh, they've seen in some other opponents like Drake. And uh, hopefully we can get something going here on the ground. Of course, that's how you use bread and butter, their running game. Again, backs are split. Two wide receivers right this time. Hancock to throw. Sets, has time, throws left flat, incomplete. Flag on the play. It'll be pass interference. They tried to go to Silvestri, but the uh, pass interference will be called on Asuman Isaka, sophomore defensive back from Chicago. I'm going to let you say his name there, Mark. <laughs> but the, he had his left hand on Andy's back as he was coming across the right, to the right, actually towards midfield. And uh, had his left hand on his back and reached around the right hand to slap the ball away. And the official right on top said, you can't have your left hand on holding him back and then knock the ball away. Spartans trying for their third win in a row, which kind of feels nice to say after the start day you had. Well, they did not start out real well the first four games defeat. And uh, again, the, if you can't get moral victories out of some of those games, and certainly those are the situations where you played some teams very tough and we're in a game with Drake in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, you always try and look on the positive side of things. First down to the 15 after the walk-off. Hancock pitches it out right side to Fonzie Medina. Tried to cut back, couldn't do it. Spun away from one man, somehow kept on his feet. He's still going to lose yardage back to about the 23, but there is a flag now at the point of tackle. Maybe a face mask to help bail out the Spartans. Well, what a great run by Fonzie Medina just to break away from that one would-be tackler and then tried to get out to the outside and lost yardage, but then uh, unfortunately for the Trojans, Somebody wrapped him up a little high around the head area, I would think. That's exactly what it is. So, indeed, the face mask helps the Spartans big time. Well, how did Medina stay on his feet? Boy, that reminded me of some Walter Payton runs where he bounces off people. It looks like he's halfway down, and he keeps his balance and struggles to his feet and keeps going. But again, Fonzie at 5'3". Yeah, it's 5'3 in our program anyway, 5'3", 150 pounds. And uh, it's hard sometimes, uh, especially when you've got big guys on the defensive side of the ball like Trinity does. You, you're you're trying to bend over and reach down to tackle the guy. He's still right around his head area. First and five after the walk off to the 10 on the face mask. Especially when you're someone like Eugene Mays, who's 6'5", 330 pounds there on that defensive line. 6'5", 330, just a sophomore. And he is from Charleston, South Carolina. He's the nose tackle for Trinity. They've got very big players from all over the country in on this program. On first and five. Play action, rolling out left side. Hancock throws. He's got a man, Sylvester, in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Spartan. He was wide open. Boy, he just flat out beat the cornerback to that side of the field. He had uh, Shannon Hester with him, but Shannon was about three steps behind. And uh, Andy just a down, quick down and out, and wide open for the 10-yard scoring strike. Boy, and how successful will the Spartans be today if they can throw the ball at all? Because everybody obviously wants to put nine guys right in the box, force them to throw. If they can come up with some passes like that, this could be a nice day. Well, what I liked about that was the fact you let Mark Hancock roll out 
get on the run. And just throw it with his left hand, just a bullet to the corner. That was a nice pass. So, Ross Draper will come on for the PAT instead of Jacobs. And Ross, it's a low one, but it's good. It gets over. So, for the first time in a couple weeks, he goes out there for the kick and puts it through. 7 nothing. Aurora University with 13.52 to go first quarter. Kickoff after we take this timeout. We get set for the kick. Ross Draper will tee it up and do the honors. As the Spartans on top by a score of 7 nothing. Again, Trinity coming in 5-2. and two. Spartans at 2-4, and four, trying for that third win in a row. And obviously turnover is always important. And that turnover right there cost Trinity 7 points. Just a huge break for the Spartans right out of the gate. See what Ross could get here. A little softer turf towards the middle of the field. We, we were down on there to talk about that in a moment. And the kick. It's going to be a high, short kick. And it'll be caught at about the 15-yard line up the middle of the field again. Lance Stevens cuts through, breaks outside 35. And all down at about the 37-yard line by Matt Deegan. Deegan didn't get him. He might have gone. Well, he just needed to make that corner. And again, like you say, if Matt doesn't catch him, there weren't too many other white jerseys left to try and cut off that corner. And then... Just a nice move on his part, follows blockers to the right side. First chance to see the Trinity offense run by John Stark, the 6'4", 220-pound senior quarterback from Nashville, Tennessee, transferred in from Florida State. Talking about him as a draft choice in the National Football League, already, already invited to the Hula Bowl as an all-star quarterback. Shotgun formation on first down, two wide outs to each side, plus a blocking back who also goes out in the pattern and starts to throw. In the right flat, complete to about the 48, 50-yard line, and first down at midfield to the other likely draft pick, Carl Hankton, 6'3", 207, senior from New Orleans, transferred in from LSU again, a likely draft pick as well. These guys are impressive. Well, Leslie for, uh, Frazier, former Chicago Bear, the head coach here at Trinity, and he's done a tremendous job in turning this program around, and he's gone national in his recruiting efforts. Shotgun again on first down. Start to throw, pop pass over the middle, complete. That should be a first down as well at the 40-yard line. And back to their other likely draft pick, Demetrius Coleman, the tight end, 6'4", 245, the sophomore from Chicago, Illinois. Two plays, two first downs, they're making it look easy. I was going to mention about that turf. Uh, we were down there on the field. I mentioned to Brandon Koff. It was really nice grass in the end zone. It looked like they hadn't been in that end zone too much. But uh, you get towards midfield, they had to replace a lot of the sod, and it was really ripped up. Uh, Totally different than the rest of the field. At least it's wet and muddy, especially there in the middle of the field. First down at the AU 40. Shotgun and handoff up the middle. That's going to be a nice game. Fumble again. And I see the Spartans may have fallen on again. Yes, they do. At the 30, AU pounces on another fumble. Matt Deegan right there to pick it up for Aurora U. And again, just fighting for extra yardage. And just a pretty good run nonetheless. And uh, he had the first down and then some, but fighting for a little extra more as he was wrapped up, and I'm not sure who stripped him, but Matt Deegan was there to, to dive on it, and again, Aurora U dodging a bullet here. And Theo Williams, their running back, he's the transfer in from Southern Cal. I mean, this team is loaded, but they've made some mistakes here, and Spartans get the ball back. They're going to stay at their own 29. There are 17 guys from Florida, 30 total on this roster for Trinity or from Warm Weather State. And... There's going to be a whistle and a flag even before that play starts, and let's see what that's all about. Well, Andy Silvestri moved on the far side. He was lined up with uh, Shannon Hester. Hester faked to come up, and he was going to bump him, and uh, Andy got a little excited and took a step forward. Procedure, so AU going to walk back, first and 15. Back at about the 24. But as we talked about all those possible, you know, NFL players and those kind of things, they're all on the offensive side of the football. Olivet, who AU has already beaten, picked up over 400 yards of total offense against Trinity last week, and that's why that was able to be a very close game. Trinity won it by a touchdown. Hancock to throw. Has time. Now runs out of time and sacks. Back at the 15, but nice job from the hold out of the football because he almost popped that up. And John Lambert from the blind side. Linebacker came all the way around the left side in the blitz and the, got around the block of, uh, I believe it was Kennedy. Came to the blind side of uh, Hancock. And again, like you say, good thing that he held on to that because he was just had his arm out away from his body about ready to throw that. And as he took the hit, he hauled it in towards his body and held on to it. Second down at 25 right now for AU. 
Draper is the wide out to the right side. So Vestry to the left. Hancock calling it out. And he'll hand it off. Medina up the middle, trying to get outside. Cannot plus the flag on the play. Flag right in the middle of the pile there, right where Fonzie was trying to make a move to the outside. And probably a hold, I would imagine, against the, Swar the Spartans. Now they pile it out. Let's see. Yes, indeed, offensive holding. That's not helping matters any at all. Well, that is one thing about the draw play, Mark, where you're got to hold your blocks for a couple extra seconds than you normally would in some other situations. And uh, sometimes that's not easy to do, especially when your running back starts going and the defender starts running away from you. If you're locked in with them, sometimes uh, it's just an unfortunate situation. And uh, you're tied up with them, and that's a holding call. They're going to decline the penalty because really there was no game. So that becomes third and 25 for AU. There's that handoff to Medina. Didn't get him anything. So third and very long. Bauman to the right. It's going to be Hannigan as a wide out to the left. Normally they're tight end. Actually, it's going to be two wide outs right side of Silvestri there as well. An option play. Quarterback will take it himself. Only going to get a couple of yards. About five yards for Hancock. So fourth down at about 20, and AU going to have to punt it away. I think you hear the fans cheering a little bit before the snap of that football and stomping their feet here in these the metal bleachers that they have here. I don't know about you, but I felt the whole place shaking. Absolutely. And after last week at IBC with the tilted press box, I thought, <laughs> <I know. laughs> getting a little nervous up here. This seems a little bit more stable, however. <laughs> but it was certainly vibrating a lot just now with all these fans here in their senior recognition day. Making oh. this place vibrate a little bit. Ross Draper going to punt today. And he'll let it go from about his own 10-yard line. Good snap. And the kick gets away, and it's a nice one. And it'll bounce and continue to bounce about the 38, where the receiver going to be smothered as soon as he picked it up as Jason Volker in on the tackle right there. So nice punt by Ross Draper. Great job. Uh, Jason Volker came around to the outside, avoided the blocker, and put the, put the tackle quickly on Jesse Estrada. Jesse backed up and took it on the bounce instead of trying to come up and take the, the shoestring catch. And then he thought he was going to go somewhere. Well, not, a, not at all. Jason right on top of him by that point. Ryan Ridgely, the normal punter, sprained his ankle. And he may not even play next week. We'll just kind of wait and see. But Draper, nice punt there anyway. So Trinity from the 30, still down 7 nothing. Hankton is the wideout right, plus they've got their big tight end, Coleman, to the right. The shotgun formation. Stark's going to hand it off. Off the right side, cut back middle. Missed tackle there, and only reason why that wasn't a bigger run for Kerry Thompson is he slipped in the muck in the mire right after he got the first down at about the 43-yard line. Thank goodness for the uh, grounds crew. Yeah, or lack thereof in that situation. I uh, hear you. That soft turf in the middle of the field was what brought him down in that play as he tried to make a cut to the outside, and there was nobody for Roy U to the outside. He was had one man, Brandon Koff, who was being blocked pretty well. That would have been probably six. Shotgun again for Stark. Sets. Comes the blitz. Trouble. Chase gets away and throws it downfield and way out of bounds, but just avoid the sack is all. There were four Spartans around him by the time he threw that football. B.J. Girl was all over him, just couldn't wrap him up. Yeah, he was the one who got there first. He just couldn't get him. Well, second and ten. Again, we talk about Stark. He's 6'4", 220, but he's got good feet, and that was how we distinguished, without looking at the program, who was who when they had their two quarterbacks warming up. Oh, you could see they both could throw, but Stark could move. Exactly. Second and ten. Backs in the eye this time. Two wide outs right. Stark under center. Now drops back. And chased again, this time by Jacobs, gets away, but the quarterback will take it himself and start pushed out of bounds by midfield, still shy by about three yards of the first down. Well, actually, they're not going to even give him that good of a mark, it looks like. Oh, they, they say he stepped out of bounds at about the 48 or 47, even before he was pushed out of bounds later on. Well, after he hit the mud and slid about five yards, he ended up at the 45, I believe, <laughs> but <laughs> said he stepped out way back across the midfield strike. Either way, it's third and six at about their own 47 for Trinity. Shotgun again for Stark. On the shotgun, he'll look downfield. Throws right sideline to the big tight end. Coleman can't get there over his head. In 
incomplete. And Matt Deegan had to try to catch up with Big Coleman. And I'm not sure what he would have done if he would have got there. Boy, again, you throw your tight end way out there in a long pattern. He's got that kind of speed and go along with that size. Deegan, 5'8", 165, the freshman from Naperville North. And Coleman is the tight end, 6'4", 245. They're okay. wide out, Carl Hankton at 6'3", and then their other one, Jesse Estrada, 5'5". Five, five. They look weird when those two pass. That one bounced into the punter, but he picks it up, gets it away, and they're going to call the flag. They're going to throw the flag. The punt dies at about the 13-yard line. Boy, oh boy. Well, the ball hit the ground, so technically that is not roughing the passer. should not be roughing the passer. I don't Correct. understand that at all. The ball rolled into him. That was Brian Bachman who came up, and as the kicker stood up, Brian Bachman just put his arm out because Brian was standing right over him. The kicker did a pretty good job of, uh, I mean, Bachman, Bachman slid to a stop, <laughs> and, and the punter made sure that there was contact made, and he threw the flag, and, well, I don't think there's any way that should have been called a penalty. It's going to be the five-yard walk-off and not the 15, so it becomes okay. fourth and one, and now they're going to go for the first down at the AU 48. Okay. Well, fourth and one, let's see what happens. They're going to go with the I formation. Quarterback sneak, maybe? Stark oh. calls an audible. Pitch out to the right side, fumble the football. Spartans have it. Gary Thompson fumbled the pitch. It was right to him, too. Well, that looked similar to what happened to Ponzi Medina earlier. Just not ready for the pitch, and uh, that ball hit him in a bad spot. The hands. Well, Hancock has it first and ten. Spartans on their own 49. Hand off Ryan Kennedy, and he got a yard. Well, he was hit immediately. We've talked so much about John Stark here to this first only 20 minutes of football. There's still 10 minutes on a running clock here in the second quarter, but... Uh, his physical ability and the fact that pro scouts like what they've seen in him, I know one thing he's not going to do. He's not going to play in the Canadian Football League. No. They don't get as much time in between plays. And uh, he's used <laughs> every second, I think, today in about a half dozen occasions. Or a few more. Play clock. Boy. Second and nine from midfield for the Spartans, up by seven. Hancock. Straight drop. Slant pattern over the middle. Draper made the catch. Dropped the ball, but he fell right back on it. At the 36-yard line of Trinity, that's a first down AU. Oh, Ross. He's having a day, man. Yeah, Ross just stepped inside, caught that ball, and he was wrapped up. The receiver wrapped him up from behind, wrapped around his arms, and uh, instead of being able to hold that ball in close against his chest, it was yanked down around his thighs, and he just lost the handline as he, as he was going down. Luckily, it didn't roll away far in that mud, and he was able to fall on it. So from the 36, first down AU. Runkel and Medina in a staggered eye. Hancock has Natividad to the right. Sylvester left. Hand off up the middle, and Runkel, boy, he's going to fight for about two yards. And about eight guys push him backwards, but he never went down to the ground, man. Give him some credit. He's standing his feet. Boy, at one point there, I thought Brett didn't have his helmet anymore. There were so many blue <laughs> jerseys around him, I couldn't see his head. <laughs> they had him surrounded, literally. He is a tough guy, though, second and eight inside the 35. You know, you mentioned the fact that he never went to the ground. That's because he had guys on all four sides holding him up. That's true. So they were all pushing against each other, and he stayed on his feet. <laughs> You're going to point there. <laughs> Two wideouts left. Hannigan to wide out right. Backs are split. Kennedy and Medina this time behind Hancock. And play action, and Hancock smothered before he can get the pass off. And we haven't said too much about 94, Eugene Mazie, about except about his size, but his size paid off that time, all 330 pounds of him on top of Hancock. Well, what made that play for him in that particular situation, it was not a deep drop at all by Hancock, and he just had a good line search that Mays, and it was only about a three, four-yard loss is all it was. He just... And off at the line that he was pushing back and pushed him into Hancock. He slid off that block and just made the tackle. Third down, about 12 for AU. Hancock. Straight drop. Swing pass left side. Fonzie Medina makes the catch. 
now moves forward, try to cut back middle and couldn't, only gained about two yards, four yards on the play, I should say, to make it fourth and eight. When you've got playing conditions totally different than what you normally would practice on, what you normally play on, that type of thing, you got to feel that even though the turf, is, for the most part, except for the one huge section where there's new sod, is in pretty good shape, it's still wet and now getting very muddy. And you got to change your game a little bit. Fonzie trying to make cuts that just aren't possible on this surface, and uh, he could have gotten about six more yards out of it. He just run down the sideline. Just use your speed. You've got to really utilize what one of your assets is. Draper going to punt again, try to put it deep. He stands at midfield waiting for the snap. The wind has picked up a little bit here, Mark, and blowing a little bit now out of the north, which would be into Ross's face, and a little bit of rain coming down with that as well. Gets it away. Another nice one. Fair catch called four. Drops he the ball it. at the 15-yard line. Spartans fall on the ball. They've got it at the 15. Oh, my. I just mentioned that wind blowing in Draper's face. It affected the kick. All of a sudden, Estrada, he's standing in about his own 10-yard line and has to come running up to try and make that catch on the fair catch signal and uh, ended up having to dive, and he lost the handle when he dove for the ball. Now, let's see. The officials are talking about something. They wow. talked it over and threw the flag. They decided after a conference to call a penalty. It wasn't like they called the penalty and then talked about it. They talked about it and then called a penalty. That's a joke. First down, Trinity at their own 20. That was bizarre. That's now, a Martin's horrible call. Now, Jim Scott wants an explanation. He wants an explanation, and he's not happy with this at all. And uh, they, what they did, they called a block in the back against Aurora U and then gave them the football in addition to that. Oh. Well, AU called timeout, so we'll take another break. 6.32 to go in the half. 7 nothing AU back after this on KKD. So first and 10 for Trinity from their 20-yard line. Backs in the eye. Stark going to roll out left side. Looks downfield. In trouble. Now lets it go. It's going to be complete. First down at the 38-yard line. Hankton came back for the ball. Nice play. Great presence of mind that time by John Stark. Rolled to his left. Looked to his receiver down this side of the field. Nobody there. Nothing happening. Went back to the right side of the field. Had one man short, one man long, and then threw a bullet to the long guy. Pitch out right side. Thompson trying to get outside. Spin move. Pushed forward. Picked up about seven, eight yards to the 45. I just I still know, can't believe that call. <laughs> they got together and said, well, gee, what can we call? Did you, you just saw me shake my head. I, I just did, did, didn't make sense. And then they gave Trinity the ball back in addition to that. Uh, I don't get it. Second and two from about the 45. High formation. And handoff, last man through. Thompson slipped and fell as he tried to make his cut. Well, he took a big divot. He gained a yard. It's third and one. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I saw you do I saw you do a few of those on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm taking divots just like that. <laughs> At least that much turf, if not more. Third and one. Handoff, first man through. The fullback going through gets the first down to the 50. Good surge that time of their offensive line. Offensive line has got some big size as well, but that time they really knocked the roar you off the ball. So Mike Jones, the fullback, gets to midfield for the first time. We haven't seen too much of that out of them today. Marlon Clark, one of them, at six foot three hundred and ten pounds up there in that front line. Right at midfield here, V. Very muddy in that area. Yes, indeed. Backs in the eye. Straight drop. In trouble, steps up, throws, incomplete as the ball's out of bounds. Diving attempt by Estrada, couldn't get there. Well, again, that's a, that's a good matchup, one-on-one, -on -one, literally, again, number one, guarding number one, and Jesse Estrada at 5'5", 150, and Brandon Croft at 5'4". I don't know, I guess he is 5'5", five, five. they listen here, 5'5", five, five, 140. He's a 10 pounds, but that's about it. Looks like Mira, and they both look the same, they run the same got different shades of blue on. <laughs> Second down and 10. High formation, pitch out right side, Thompson, and smothered immediately, no gain, maybe a yard at the most to set up third and nine. Boy, Avery came up and Watson there at the bottom of the pile as well. Still four and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Plenty of time, obviously. 
Hey, is that the sun? Is that the sun <laughs> actually trying to peek out? I think you're right. Third and nine. Shotgun formation for Stark. Now men in motion right. Oh, the oh. snap is well over his head. Goes back to pick it and falls on it way back at the 33-yard line. Big, big loss. Fourth and forever, they'll have to punt. Boy, oh boy, this is baseball. We'd call the infield fly rule on that. <laughs> you weren't kidding. <laughs> well, at 12 foot four, he wouldn't have caught that snap. <laughs> no. That ball went straight up in the air again, a wet surface and uh, real muddy right around midfield. They don't know what happened with the snap exactly, but it might have slipped on him. You put Elijah Wan on Shaq's shoulders, they still wouldn't have got to that. The punt will come from about the 20. And gets the kick away. Brandon Koff will make the fair catch, and he'll make the catch at the 25-yard line. And Spartans will start from there. Nice punt. Spartans still have the 7-0 lead. It seems like they scored about a day and a half ago. And 3-18 to go in the half. Well, they did, actually. <laughs> scored at the 13-52 mark of this game after Trinity fumbled the opening kickoff. So first down, we'll see what AU can do here on offense. Keep mentioning the mud and the weather here and the, the rain, obviously, that this area has received. And we've never seen it. You and I, we were down in the field before, and we've never seen where the crest or the middle of the field was muddier than the sidelines. I don't get it. There was water sitting in the middle of the field, not on the side. Yeah, it's dry as the mud on the side. It's the middle that's a mess. Oh. And fumble! Kicked around! Who's got it? Well, Trinity's signaling that they have it, and that's the direction the official seems to be pointing. Trinity football. Well, that's a huge break for the Trojans, and coming out of the pile there with the football, Number 47, Sam Nunnery, freshman linebacker, and uh, he must have just wrestled that ball away from somebody from Aurora U on the bottom of the pile because it looks like the Spartans had the angle. Well, I think they were going to try to get the ball to Runkle on that handoff as he came from the slot to the middle, but I don't think he ever even got the handoff. It no, uh, Hancock, around. Hancock didn't exactly have the handle on the football either when he pulled away from snap. Kind of had it pinned against his hip as he was trying to hand it off. Well, now, all of a sudden, Trinity... At the AU 27, first down. Shotgun for Stark. Looks downfield. Throws it left flat. Well over the head of his intended receiver, the running back, Theo Williams, second and 10. Again, that's one of the risks that you take with a shotgun formation in this kind of mud. Actually, not mud, but just wet. Again, that snap was a little high. You had to reach up to snare it. Just threw the ball away, though. Shotgun again on second and ten. Again, looking downfield, pressured again, and just kind of dumps it away, complete underneath. And short gain very much, maybe just a yard or so is all for Theo Williams. And Deegan and others up there to make the stop. Good job by Theo Williams, though, as he caught the ball to turn, put the straight arm out. He gave Matt quite a shot as Matt came up to make the hit. You don't see that very often with a wide receiver able to straight arm somebody with that kind of effectiveness, even though Matt still made the tackle. Certainly knocked 26 back a little bit. Third and nine. Boy, how much time are they going to get now? Yeah, I know. This, this, let's somebody, see if they get a delay on this call. Did somebody start to watch there? Well, yeah, this yeah, time they're going to have to call a timeout. So Trinity calls time. 2.25 to go in the half. 7 nothing Spartans back after this on KKD. So after the timeout, Trinity comes out now. Third down, nine yards to go. They're at the Spartan 26-yard line. Shotgun for Stark. Looking right side, now throws over the middle. Tipped and almost intercepted. Nice play for AU by Jeff Rupert. Got a hand on it. Rupert and Watson that time staying at home. Again, just a reaction kind of a thing. Looks like he's playing defense and basketball and looking for the pass down low. Reached out and got a hand out. This is going to be a long one. Matt Malvitz coming on for a 43-yard attempt in the left hash mark. And the kick is on the way, and Short. it is good. Oh, 
just squeaks over and inside that right upright for the 43 yarder for Malvitz and Trinity is on the board. Well, I didn't think that kick had enough on it, but a line drive just made it. So, 213 until the half, 7 3, Spartans lead. Kickoff after this, timeout. So, set for the kickoff. Rick Natividad is the deep man right now in this setup. And Malvitz kick. And Natividad at the 8 yard line. The 20. That's back middle, and that's as far as he's going to go, about the 21-yard line right there. Spartans will have it with 2.07, 2 minutes, 7 seconds to go here in our first half of action. Mike Larson, nearby Vernon Hills with a tackle on that one for the Trojans. Shaka Rawls limping as he comes off the field for the Spartans. So Hancock brings them back out again. Kennedy and Medina, the backs, and a pro set. And option play, pitch out Medina left side. Trying to get outside, now cut back middle, but great pursuit. He can only get a couple of yards out of that one. Oh, they're just so quick. Boy, oh boy, they get to the ball in a hurry. Fonzie now with just... 30 yards rushing on the day. After that carry, that was a hard fought two yards. Second down and eight. Hey, you, I think, frankly, just trying to get to the locker room still with that lead. Yeah, they're they're fast in the secondary. They're not real fast up front, but uh, boy, they got to the ball in a hurry that play. Hand off Medina right side and cannot break that tackle, and he's going to lose a yard there to make third and nine. What do they fly to the ball? Oh, again, that Arthur Barker, 5'11", 190, sophomore from Chicago. Just fly is the key word there. Boy, did he get up and cut that off quickly. Well, Trojan's going to want to try to get this ball back with some time to do something. 121 until halftime, so they're going to call timeout. Stop the clock. As it'll be a third down, about eight-yard to go situation for AU. So, again, they'll take a timeout. We'll take one as well back after this. Hancock, counter handoff, Runkle, and he's not going to get anywhere either. He got about another yard, maybe. Fourth down, AU will indeed have to punt this ball away. So Trinity going to use another timeout just to make sure again that they've got some time to work with as the clock now goes down to 111 before AU going to have to punt the ball away. I'll tell you what, why don't you uh, just kind of re recap a little bit of scoring that we've had so far on this first half. Well, the Spartans got on the board, and Mark Hancock went 10 yards to Andy Silvestri, and that was at the 13-52 mark of this first quarter, the beginning of this game, the Spartans got on the board right away after Trinity fumbled the opening kickoff. Ross Draper added the extra point kick for a 7 to nothing Spartan lead. That's the way the first quarter played out. And then Trinity just got on the board here at the 213 mark of the second quarter. As Matt Melvitz kicked a 43-yard field goal, just in the, stuck it into the corner, lower right corner of the uprights, and 7-3. And hopefully... I say hopefully because the Spartans line up here to punt. Hopefully that's the way it's going to be here at halftime. So Spartans will punt the ball away. Ross Draper will stand back at about his 10 or so to receive the snap. So to say the least, need a good punt right now. Good snap. And gets the kick away. Fair catch called for at the 46-yard line. So on their own 46 is where Trinity is going to get things started. And again, just over a minute to work with here until halftime to see if they can get on the board again, maybe even take a lead here into the halftime locker room. So Stark going to come out and see what he can do. Obviously, he can throw the ball down a long ways. Absolutely. We've talked, we talked all game about their athletes, some of their big people. We mentioned a couple other their offensive linemen. 69 is T.C. Wilson, six foot two seventy, a freshman, and another guy out there, perfectly named for an offensive lineman, Cedric Wall, six foot two twenty five. Shotgun on first and ten. Looking downfield, Stark has time, throws into the right flat, and it's incomplete. Good coverage by AU's defense that time. There's the other guy on their offensive line, Marlon Clark, seventy three, six foot three ten, senior from Chicago. Time Rob Tustin applying some pressure for Aurora U. Stark just had nobody that was hoping. He just ended up throwing it away into the Spartan 
sideline into the bench. Second and ten. Stark going to set up a screen pass underneath the completion of the pass to Thompson, but he'll be shy of the first down by a couple yards. It'll be third down, about two or three to go at the AU 46. How much time? 45 seconds of running clock. Down to 40. So they're going to go for it, third and three. Shotgun. Stark calling it out. Now looks downfield. Nowhere to go again. Now he's going to go deep for all of it. Towards Hankton. He will not be able to make the catch at the four-yard line. And he falls down after tipping it incomplete. And he was wide open. Boy. And Stark is extremely unhappy with that. You've just got to react to the ball better than that. Carl Hankton thought he had that ball in his back pocket. And again, Stark's throwing with the wind. That ball just kept going and kept going. And he's nonchalantly jogging like he's going to catch that no problem and then all of a sudden it took off and he had to lunge for it at the last minute went off his hand down to 18 seconds they let 15 seconds run off that clock before they even ran the play because Stark was calling an audible forever it seemed like well, fourth and three now from the AU 47 going to go for it Stark sets up now nowhere to go will run it himself he's got the first down Jacobs will haul him down at the 35 yard line now they're going to run out of time here real quickly I mean they'll stop the clock to move the chains but but well, they're going to have to get something going here in a real big hurry. Down to 10 seconds. The problem with that is Jesse Estrada was way downfield. He had to hurry up to get back. Well, spikes the ball to stop the clock, but they throw the flag. Because I don't think they were set to go before they snapped the ball. Well, they did not get set on offense at all. Dead ball, legal procedure. and Good job by the clock operator that time, Mark. Did not start the clock. He went with the flag, not the snap of the football. Well, now they're back at the 39 of AU. Ten seconds. So one or two maybe plays at the most. Uh, first down and 15. Going to throw the left side underneath, incomplete, as it bounces in to the intended receiver. And that was Carl Hankton. And incomplete to him. That play took one second? No, there is one second left. Oh, there is one second left. Okay. I was going to say, you held up your finger from where we are. We can't see the clock very easily. The last play of the half here on second down and 15 with one second to go. So, looking to throw. Nowhere to go again. Just kind of running around to try to buy some time. He'll just loft it to the end zone, see what happens. He throws it through the end zone and incomplete, and that'll do it. At the end of one half of play, our score is Aurora 7, Trinity 3. We'll come back and start half number 2 after this timeout. As we get set to go for the second half here, where were you and Trinity? AU has a 7-3 lead. First half stats, John Stark, 12 of 31 passing, so not a great percentage. 107 yards, and again, 107 doesn't sound too bad at halftime, but that's on 31 attempts, and you'd like to think you're going to throw the ball 30-plus times. You're going to have more than 100 yards in the air. Well, as far as Aurora U goes, he's very fortunate that a lot of his receivers, they drop some balls, some easy catches at that, and... Uh, Again, though, 31 passes. I don't think Aurora used to throw 31 in three games combined. <laughs> well, AU is four of eight passing in the first half for 40 yards. So they have almost half the passing yards Trinity does. <laughs> like 20, you know, some less passes. Well, here we go. AU is going to yep. get the ball and go left to right in front of us. Proving again it's not quantity, but quality. Natividad back to receive. And Rick will get it at the 10-yard line. 15, 20, right side, up the hash mark there, bounces back middle, 35, and down there about the 35-yard line, plus a flag in the pile. A late flag there, and it looks like Patrick Smith probably going to be a hold against Aurora U. Patrick Smith and the, that was Matt Sheridan. The two of them were piled on top of a Trojan. Well, it's going to be on AU. Yeah, it was right towards the end of that play, holding against Aurora U. Yeah, it's going to go back to the 25-yard line. So AU will start it at the 25 instead of the 35 on the offensive hold. Well, I wish they had lights here, i tell you what. We need them <laughs> we, now. We've got the lights on here in the booth. And, of course, the game is going to go for another hour and a half. <laughs> Think of how dark it's going to be then. Hancock, first down. Draper in motion to the right. 
play action. Hancock looks left. Rolls left, throws on the run, he right sideline, Sylvester, he oh. dropped the ball. Had his man beat, just couldn't hang on to it. It hit him right in the numbers. Wow. Andy turned his body the wrong way and got crossed up, got a steep cross up, really couldn't leap very high to get under that, but it did hit him in the hands as he was turning. And, uh, you know, Mark, I, enough can't be said for it. Cross training, I guess. Because <laughs> in baseball, you teach outfielders to turn their shoulders on the run and not to turn their whole body. And that would have been an easy catch for an outfielder. And then Andy did not. He turned his whole body and kind of got crossed up. Second and 10, Brody Wolf now QB from the shotgun. Looks, steps up, throws over the middle, incomplete behind Hannigan, the tight end who was there. So third and 10. Well, good protection that time for Brody Wolf. But, uh, not a whole lot going on. He's looking mainly to Natividad or Hannigan right in the middle. And, you know, the defense, as the defense goes for Trinity, they just saw his eyes and, hey, there's only two guys he's looking at. He has no other options. And they just kind of hovered around that area. He threw in the triple coverage. Well, you know, and I talked to Jim Scott during the talk show on Wednesday, and I asked him about Hannigan as a tight end. And, you know, he said he could be the best AU's ever had. And that says a lot considering some of the tight ends the Spartans have had. Problem is, Quarterbacks just had a tough time getting him the football. Mm -hmm. Well, Brody Wolf to throw, and this one going to be incomplete over Ross Draper, who says, hey, pass interference, and they do get the call. The far official, who was well away from the play, does throw the flag. Well, I'm not sure he even threw that for pass interference, Mark. Well, let's see. He threw it so late that... Well, it is going to be okay. the defensive pass interference. Well, that's a first down for AU, and they'll take it. Boy, that's interesting. That flag came well after the play was over. And again, the ball thrown a little bit behind Ross Draper, and Ross slowed up and reached back for it, but the defender was right on his back regardless. The contact was made. They do get the flag. So the first down puts the ball at the 30-yard line. For a first and ten. The rain comes down a little bit again as well. You know, mm -hmm. if we play long enough, maybe we could play by the headlights of all the traffic <laughs> on 294 here going by. Shotgun for Wolf. Shotgun handoff to Medina, and he's going to bounce through. Nice gain. He got about eight yards out of that one. Good play. All that happened in the first half, and it worked. And now it works here in the third quarter. A little jawing going on now out there in the field. Chris Dirk. Throwing some blocks downfield on a couple cornerbacks. Well, by the time the IBC game ended last week, it was snowing. I tell you what, same could happen here today. Wolf under center. Second and about a yard and a half. And off Medina up the middle. Hurdles the defense, gets the first down, and dives to the 45-yard line. So first down, Aurora. I'm not sure if the coaching staff said anything to Fonzie at halftime, but he certainly looks like a different running back. And those first two times he's touched the ball, he's just bursting to the hole and going. No, nope, not trying to pick his way and not trying to make any moves in this off turf. Just use your speed and go at people. So first down at the 45. AU breaks the huddle with Sylvester as the wide out left. Draper the wide out right. Kennedy and Medina behind Wolf. And Wolf. Hand off. Medina. Bounces outside again and gets the first down to the 45-yard line of Trinity. And boy, I thought again for Trinity that big 94, Eugene Mays was going to stop him, but Fonzie got around him, thankfully, before big 94 could make the hit. Oh, I'm not sure if he went around him or through his legs. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he just appeared and he came up the other side. We talked about that some, some before we've talked about that. He's just so short sometimes he gets lost in a crowd. It's hard to find him sometimes. First and 10 at the Trinity 45. Now it's Hancock at quarterback. Dave made up his own joke, and he's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to throw. Hancock left sideline. Sylvester, he jumps. Out of bounds. Incomplete. He was out of bounds anyway. That pass is broken up by number 20, Osman and Sokka. So second and 10. Well, it's getting nasty out there now. I was just going to say, it's getting a little darker out there. That temperature's dropping, and the rain's coming down harder. Well, wind's still a little bit out of the north, and the... Kind of clear towards the north, but uh, we've got some dark clouds overhead right now. As soon as they pass, that means we'll only be halfway through this third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten, shotgun to Wolf. Hand off Medina. 
Trying to go sweep right out of the shotgun. Oh. And does break a tackle, but he lost his balance. And only going to gain about two yards on a slide to the right side after he was tripped up. Boy, I give John Lambert credit just for getting an ankle, getting a hold of Fonzie's ankle, that is, and just threw him off balance. Because Fonzie was just about ready to make that corner and get some big yards out of that play. Well, Eugene Mays at 330 pounds comes back in. Harvey Collins at 6'5", 298, a sophomore from Gary, came out. Well, hey, they gave up 40 pounds. They're so deep, they can afford to have those guys that size standing on the sideline. Play action, Wolf to throw over the middle. Is intended for Bauman, but it was too high off his fingertips and complete. Well, that's why it's so important, Mark, to practice as you play. You've heard that before, and Brody Wolf just is not in a rhythm. He's not sharp when he's out there. He really has not shown much of a touch. And he certainly has a great arm, but uh, he really hasn't been nowhere in, in hitting his receivers. He just has not taken that many snaps lately. And he, that just makes your practice that much more important for you. Stay sharp. It's the same thing with pitchers. you got to work out in the bullpen and keep sharp. And the only thing in basketball, I wish they had a side basket. You could shoot somewhere while you're on the bench. Draper to kick. He'll let it go from his own 45 on fourth and nine. It'll bounce and die right at about the 15-yard line. And that ball, actually, I thought was still going to roll an extra you know, yard or two, but someone picked it up. I'm not sure why, but... As it is, still Trinity going to get the ball to 15. Pretty good punt again. You know, Brian Bachman right down there in the coverage and scooped it on the bounce, but uh, that ball would have went maybe a two, three, four more yards. It still would have been moving. As it is, they're back in a hole, so to speak, starting from their own 16. Well, 7 free Aurora here in the third. See what the defense can do here. Maybe create a turnover now would be nice. Start the quarterback. Rain coming down harder. This time he's under center. He's got a full back behind him. And two wide outs to each side. Not one of those in motion, so it trips to the right. And start to throw. As time goes for the deep one over the middle. Incomplete. Had a defender in front and a defender behind. And overthrown. And how do you overthrow? <laughs> a pass. You know, a guy who ran about 50 yards downfield. Well, how you do that, Mark, is you've got a little bit of a wind to your back, and I was going to say, both the receiver and Drew Avery committed or jumped, and then the ball ended up nowhere near them. They both jumped in the air for it, and the ball just kept carrying and kept kept going. They've got the wind to their back, and Stark let it fly. Well, any questions about his arm were answered there. Man, but second and ten. Hand off to the running back. Coming out of the backfield to about the 23-yard line or so. Pick up that time. Thank you, John Novak. Theo Williams. Theo Williams had made the cut back to the inside. And there was no corner or free safety. They'd gone to the opposite side of the field. As Novak doesn't make that catch, it turns into a foot race all of a sudden. <laughs> you got a point. Third down and three for Trinity from about their 23. Dave, do you have the windshield wipers on yet? I don't know. I didn't bring my squeegee. I don't really want to open that window either, let me tell you. Max in the eye. <laughs> on third and three. Looking to the right side, the throw is going to be dropped right through the hands of Jesse Estrada. And again, that would have been a first down if he hangs on, but he cannot. So, fourth and three, they'll have to punt it away. Well, that ball fluttered a little bit on Stark. I think it was tipped a little bit by Rob Tustin at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure. Either that or he just disrupted the trajectory of it, so to speak, and made Stark throw it a little farther over than he wanted to. But Estrada had to come back to it and bobbled it and dropped it. Jeff Heeshan will punt it away. He'll let it go from just across his own 10. Cough waits at about his own 43. And the kick comes. Another high one. Brendan Cough will make the fair catch at the 45-yard line. Spartans from their own 45 to get things started. Let's see if they can take advantage of this good field position in the 7-3 AU lead. Unofficially, that was 4.1 on the hang time there, Mark, for that kick. <laughs> So 33 yards. And it'll be Hancock bringing them out. Medina and Kennedy. Natividad right, Silvestri left. Hancock. Looking to throw on first down. Right side of Hannigan. Great catch at midfield. About a six-yard gain. And how did he go up there and grab that ball? Boy, what a huge grab by D. Hannigan. Up and over, but I'm not sure if that was exactly what they wanted. 
and Kennedy and the Tibbet all right around the football really flooded that area and flooded it with blue jerseys as well on a pass where you're locking it out up and over for somebody to reach up and grab it. That's a risky pass with the free safety over there maybe waiting as a center fielder to pick it off. Second down and four. Hancock goes across midfield, hands it off Medina up the middle, flag on the play, and got close to the first down, but it's probably going to come back anyway. Yeah, there's a definite hold right in the middle of the field. Oh, that hurt. Sam Holmes, the defensive lineman, looked like he was moving in cement, much less uh, muddy <laughs> turf in the middle of the field. He, he got up saying, hey, hold it a second. I'm quicker than that. And then he saw the flag laying at his feet. goes, all right, thank you. 10.25 to go in the third. Walk off puts Aurora back on their 41-yard line. Second down, about 15. Now it's Brody Wolf under center. Tight end is a slot left, and now Hannigan goes motion right. And Wolf. He's got him. Let's it go over the oh. middle, and it's going to be incomplete. Hannigan that time couldn't hang on to it. And it'll be third down and 15. And a flag. Well, another flag on this near side. Hannigan in motion. So that is what they're going to call. I think that might have been on P. Hannigan because he went in motion, Mark, but he stopped. Did not go to a set position. Well, they're going to call. Did not make a move upfield. They're going to decline it anyway. So the motion penalty going to be declined. Third down and 15 for AU. Came across, though, and was wide open. Again, Brody, not much of a touch on that pass. Just threw a bullet to him. He's only five yards away. Yeah, no, that's true. There was too much on that pass. Bull from the shotgun. Looks over the middle. Throws. Oh. Intercepted at the 45-50. 45-40, right sideline, 35-30, still on his feet and finally run out of bounds at about the AU 20-yard line. Through the ball right to John Lambert, the junior linebacker from Smith Center, Kansas. Well, they sent Nativitad long and sent Silvestri in a slant pattern, and that uh, was Lambert just playing center fielder, stepped in front of it. Silvestri was coming across towards it. He just stood there and waited for the ball and stepped in front and picked it off. That's a killer. Rowley Wolf was the one who knocked him out of bounds eventually, but uh, that is a big, big play for Trinity at this point. Line of scrimmage is the AU 23-yard line. Still 10 minutes to go here in this third quarter. We've got a long way to go. Stark under center. Two wide outs left. Two running backs. He'll hand it off left side. Not much there. Maybe a two-yard game. Jacobs on the stop of Kerry Thompson. Second down and eight. I was going to say credit B.J. Girl that time for forcing him to the outside and right into the arms of Jacob. So second and eight. Let's see what they want to try. Shotgun this time. Two odd receivers to the right side. And he'll look to the right and throw. He's got Hankton complete down to about the 10 or 11 yard line. So first down. Maybe even first and goal here for Trinity. Boy, that just makes it so easy when you've got a receiver like Hankton with the speed that he possesses. He just goes down, stops, and turns around. You throw a bullet to him. The defender, he's got to back off of him a little bit and give him a little bit of a cushion. You don't want him to go by you. First and ten, they can get a first down inside the one, but really for all intents and purposes, first and goal. Shotgun. Stark. Looks. Has time. Oh, and now gets sacked. Back to the 21 yard line. What a huge play. Rob Tustin ran right through Cedric Wall. He ran through a wall literally on that play. <laughs> Make a huge sack. Boy, Tustin, the big, big play. Back to the 21 yard line. So basically, second and goal from the 21. And the rain continues. Oh, he was set up in the pocket looking to the left side of Estrada, and he said something to Jesse as he came back to the huddle. Stark did about, hey, you got to come back to me. And nice coverage because, really, he did have time. But then time ran out. Shotgun. 
And again, he's being chased. The safety blitz. He dumps it underneath. It's going to be complete down to about the 15-yard line. So short gain for Kerry Thompson. But the safety blitz made him get it away in a hurry, and it becomes third down and goal, basically, from about the 15. Well, Jason Volker came flying in from the left side, and he tossed it right over his head. And Novak was the one there to try and break that up, and he guessed wrong. He thought he was going to come to the inside. He went to the outside, and still he only got about six yards out of that play. Thought that was going to be a much bigger play, but it took a little bit of time to, to gather it. So third down, they're going to say 14-yard line. So let's see what happens on third down. Shotgun again for Stark. The two best receivers to the right. And looking, throwing. Right side towards the corner of the end zone to Hankton. It's going to be out of bounds through the end zone incomplete. So it'll be fourth down and goal basically from the 14-yard line. And that play, again, took forever to get away. You get 30 seconds from this. But the whistle, the official, says everything's set, but uh, he used just about every bit of it again, and I'm sure the coaches will keep an eye on that and film even. Going to go for the field goal, which will be a 31-yard attempt. 31-yard attempt by Malvitz. Where's Walsh? And he came in from the side, but couldn't quite get there in time, and that one good. So 7-6, Trinity now back within a point. As the Spartans have the lead with... 7.24 to go in the third quarter. Kickoff after this. Timeout. And the kick. The Tividad will make the catch at the 10. 15 behind the wedge. 20. Cuts back middle through to the 30 and off the 32-yard line. The Tividad doing a pretty good job. Hasn't broken the big one, but has been getting some good yardage. Good solid return. And again, Ricky got it and just went ahead and went straight forward into the pile, not trying to pick his way. So Spartans from the 32-yard line, they're going to say, for Press set it down and see what they can do. Not that you and I have anywhere real important to go after this, but we just... <laughs> I know. It's like, look up at the clock and go, I can't believe there's that much time yet. I know it. By the way, congratulations, Aurora Central. Two-way playoff winner earlier today, here as you heard live on 1580. The Chargers with a win and something else I got to charge out of you and I'm sure some other U of I fans, <coughs> Northwestern, a winner. Wildcats over the Illini today. Throw into the left. Oh, no. Flat tip. Caught somehow by Ross Drapel on a deflection. And a gain of about eight yards or so on the play, and that probably should have been an interception as it is. It's a catch for AU. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and that was a perfect situation there for the easy pick. Arthur Baker was in front of the ball, and just somehow it went off his hands. And Draper there for the deflection, but uh, not a real good pass by Mark Hancock. Lost it out there in the flat. Second and two, handoff, Medina, right side, trying to get outside, and dives forward. He did a nice job to dive and should get the first down. It's about the 43, but he somehow found a seam between all of those defenders. Well, again, Fonzie is so first and 10 AU, <clears throat> excuse me, at the 43-yard line. Sylvester left, and Tividad to the right. Shotgun for Hancock on first down. And looks to throw. Look out. Over the middle, complete, Hannigan, first down. Picked up 11 to about the 46-yard line of Trinity. Hancock just got that ball away in time and took a hit from Eugene Mays after that. <laughs> He'll feel that for a while. And they did just get the first down. Nice thing about that is if you can make that completion out of that shotgun, it can still set up that shotgun handoff. Mm -hmm. so everybody can't count on that handoff coming if you can make that pass every now and then. Shotgun again for Hancock on first down from the Trinity 46. He is going to have the handoff Medina this time out of the shotgun. And only going to get about two, three yards, maybe to the 44-yard line of Trinity on that one. Well, again, with the mud and the wet turf, it, it makes it a little interesting, though, too, with the, the shotgun. I always take that chance. It's a bad snap. It's like a short punt snap. You're running it almost every play. We saw it earlier, Trinity snapping way over Stark's head on a, on a shotgun formation. Medina now, 59 yards on the day. Second down and eight. About five minutes to go now in the third quarter. 7-6 AU. Hancock looks right. Swing pass right side, but over Medina's head and incomplete. Had a little too much on that one. Hmm. So third and long. 
see that too often, a guy with a little too much zip on a swing pass. <laughs> well, one thing, AU needs to get some more points. You know, it's nice to still be leading in this ball game late in the third quarter, but to beat Trinity, odds are you're going to need to score more than seven points. Shotgun fakes the handoff, throws over the middle. Draper is there for the catch. First down, thrown down at the Trinity 25-yard line. He doesn't care. He's got the first down. Oh, he doesn't care for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the nice catch by Ross. The defender never turned around. Kerry Hartuni in the linebacker had his back to the ball and just never turned around or read Ross's eyes on that. And Ross was right next to him and caught the ball. But knowing him, he liked the fact that he got muddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a big play. That is a huge play for Aurora U and get him in position. Put some more points on the board. First down at the 25, Hancock. This time pro set. And going to fake the handoff, roll out, throw to the left flat, and overthrows Kevin Young coming out of the backfield. And incomplete. A little pressure that time by Harvey Collins, 6'5", 298 sophomore from Gary, Indiana. How much time we got, Steve? 4.33, Mark. Until the end of the third, 7.6 AU. We're in a very small Trinity press box, so we're... <laughs> He's got the scoreboard. I've got some of the field. There's a big post <laughs> in the middle. There's a big wall. It's <laughs> and, and don't forget Dave Byer. Yes, but he is in a seating position, and we're standing. So second and ten. Option play. Pitch out to Medina. But that one just wasn't going to go from the get-go. No gain at all on that play. Well, the quick pitch is a short side and just not enough real estate for Ponzi to get some running room. Brings up a... Actually lost the yard, so yeah. third and 11. It's going to be third and 11. Going to bring up an interesting call here. Jim Scott talking it over with a trio of receivers. Hannigan and Draper come in. Runkle and Kennedy come out. Young was the other one who came in with those two. Uh, third and 11. Draper and Hannigan to the right side. Shotgun formation. Hancock. Low snap, drops the ball, and just dives on it. That's all he could do. He started to backpedal even before the snap came to him. And on the low snap, he couldn't then bend over to go get it because he slipped. Well, there's where the wet surface came into play again. You mentioned low snap, and he's backpedaling. All of a sudden, he's got to stop and react because the ball's low, and he tried to stop, and he slipped. And just got a hand on it and knock it down, and it crawled forward to fall on the football. Well, at least he could fall on it indeed and keep possession so that AU maybe now can punt him deep into their territory as Draper comes back on. Again, Ridgely, not planned today with a turned ankle. But Draper's done a nice job. Now of Oswego. Of course, there's Panthers. Took it on the chin last night in the first-round playoff upset at the hands of Remen, which was a surprise. And the kick on the way. Another nice one, and it'll bounce at the two and knock down at the oh. one yard line. No, oh. official says that Jesus. it was in the end zone well, for Ron Henderson as he touched the ball to knock it back into play, and it was really, really close. That yeah, was really close. Ronnie Henderson got down there, sprint, got to the goal line, stopped to turn around, and as he came across the field to try and cut that ball off, the official said he put one foot in the end zone when he came back out to knock it knock it down so technically what, a touchback but another great punt for ross draper he's had a nice day just kick it high and give your buddies a chance to get downfield and get in position well at the 20 for trinity shotgun for stark 7-6 au lead stark throws over the middle incomplete try to get it to the big tight end again but incomplete to Demetrius Coleman, second and 10. 2.40 to go now in the third quarter. Spartans by a point. Yeah, I know. Dave Byer <laughs> on your, your passing sheet, you've got room for 52 passes, and you're running out of room in a hurry. And we've got a long ways to go yet. Second and 10. But again, the percentage is not looking too good right now. Or Stark. Throws this time, and again, oh, he went for Coleman, the tight end. This time it was a good pass, and Coleman just flat out dropped it. Well, wow. He's got a big hunk of tape on that right hand, which probably didn't help matters any, but he just plain didn't catch it. I'll take that, third and ten. Boy, 
that ball hit him in a bad spot, the hands. <laughs> I know it. Man alive. You mentioned his right arm and wrist heavily wrapped. Kind of looked like Shaquille O'Neal <laughs> post-operation look, but uh, either way, he should have had that ball. So on third and ten, again, the shotgun for Stark. Looks, looks, throws, right sideline again for Coleman. This time he does make the catch. First down, runs out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Well, I don't know if it means anything, but he's running to his left. And he hauls that ball in initially with his left hand, which is not wrapped, and just uses the right hand to guide it in or to corral it as well. And that was an easy catch from that time on the run, whereas the other one before, an easy, easy one as well, but he dropped it. Well, first down for Trinity. In other words, he, he needs to shoot off the ball. He's not a spot-up shooter, Mark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he needs to get the feet on the move. Looking again to throw his start. Dumps it away. Underneath, running back makes the catch. First down to the 46-yard line. So, it should be enough for the first for the Trojans, who continue now to move the ball downfield as we catch that time once again for Theo Williams. Well, what they're doing now, Mark, is they're just getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker kind of eliminating the pressure the Spartans are trying to put on with some blitzes and different formations and things. They're trying to hide the blitzes that they're doing, and uh, he's just taking a shotgun and a couple steps, and that's it, just throw. Don't give them time to put any pressure on you and look very far down the field. Going to measure for the first down. And Dave Byers' prediction of short by inches was correct. Well, Dave's lined up almost perfectly with that ball. As we sit here in the press box, and he could see that, by the way. Pretty good eye. He didn't even get his binoculars out for that. <laughs> he knew. So second down and inches. You know, as I watched There the was chain... a line there, but I'm behaving myself, so I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. See the chain gang run out there. It makes me think of James Lancaster, <laughs> Aurora U's basketball coach who works many of the games on, as part of the chain gang. We saw Trinity's head basketball coach, Al Brule, out here a little bit earlier. They, of course, will be probably an odds-on favorite in the basketball court this winter. Second and inches for Trinity. Eye formation. Hand it off. Last Eight man minutes. through and hit a hard and drop. But since they only needed about two inches, he probably has it. But it's going to be really close. He didn't get any more than just a couple inches, that's for sure. Well, they're going to have to measure Thompson. that. They'll definitely have to measure that again. I mentioned basketball. You, you said something to me on the way here that was kind of interesting scenario uh, <laughs> not that yeah. trinity doesn't have enough big bodies on the football field as it is but yeah, uh, i know their standout basketball player and aurora native mark davidson he had thought about going out for football after his basketball eligibility yeah. ran out but instead he uh, i think he took that pro contract if i'm not mistaken finland to play a little ball of course we wish him the best in that well it is the first down again just by inches so he needed two inches for the first down and got about four nose of the football was all not by much but they did get it you mentioned that will flowers still on campus finishing up his schooling at aurora university but someone certainly with the, the ability to play at some sort of professional level well, I, had I, heard I had heard he was going to get a tryout if i'm not mistaken with the with the chicago rockers or one of those cba teams mm -hmm. <clears throat> i don't know if that fell through or if it didn't happen first and ten shotgun and let's start man being chased to just kind of Dump it away, the swing pass, but under throw is his receiver incomplete. What a nice charge that time by AU. And Sharp just puts his arms off to his side, says Leslie Frazier, what am I supposed to do on that? <laughs> well, you're supposed to hit the receiver you're throwing to. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you say, can well, cry about, you know, running out of time all you want, but he had a guy open, he didn't hit him. That's right. Leslie's going, hey, you got to stand in there in the pocket and be ready to take a hit. We've seen two Chicago Bears now here, two weeks in a row, of course. Dennis McKinnon, offensive coordinator at IBC. So they didn't have a whole lot to coordinate last week against Aurora <laughs> well. <U>, Former Bear. <laughs> and former Bear Leslie Frazier, the head coach here at Trinity. Shotgun on second and ten. Stark throws a quick one with Coleman. Incomplete, plus a flag on the play. Let's see what that's all about. Probably a hold. Well, there's been some pushing and shoving going on quite a bit there with the uh, R.J. Herb after the last couple of plays, and that time looked like he got held. I would, yeah, I would think. I mean, would you decline it, make it third and ten? I would think. Well, they're going to push him back, I think, John Cooper saying, let's, let's get a little more cushion here, because after all, we are near midfield. Yeah, you got a point there. Play a little field position. 
the clock say now? <laughs> Probably well, not, not a whole lot less than the last time I asked. Clock says 127 to go here in this third grade. Seven to six, still Aurora U clinging to the lead. Well, up to this point, the longest game we've had was about three hours and 15 minutes, I think, this year. <laughs> and that record's going to be broken big time by the time today's over. Second down, about 25, actually about 20 to go after the walk-off. Didn't we say Mark Walsh was the common denominator on that whole thing? <laughs> exactly right. Start to throw. Swing pass again to the back out of the backfield. Makes the catch, but hit almost immediately for no gain. So they did hit Kerry Thompson, but he was smothered right away. And was that Volker that came up? Oh, Buckley, okay. Eight yeah, instead of three. He made can't the tackle. Really tell there. So third down and 20. Send a receiver out to the side like that, and he catches the ball. And this turf, he really can't turn up field very easily to get his footing. And you haven't seen much more after the catch. So third and long. Let's see if AU can make one more good stop right here. Get this ball back. Stark again, shotgun. Third down, about 21 yards to go. And looks, looks, throws. Going to be complete, but still about 10 yards shy of the first down. They got the ball to about the 46 or 47, and the catch made by Lance Stevens, the freshman from Indianapolis, but still going to be well shy of the first. They'll have to punt. Well, Lance Stevens came back to the football a little bit and caught that in zone coverage and really had nowhere to go. He ducked in and tried to turn and go opposite direction, but there were a couple of white jerseys there to cut him off. Jeff Heeshan to punt. To let it go from his 35. Koff is waiting. The and the quarter comes to an end. At the end of three, 7 6 Aurora back after this on KKD. As we start the fourth quarter, here comes the punt. Gets it away. Wow. And it's a beauty. But it's not going to get any bounce, thank goodness. It's about sideways. And Aurora going to get the ball at around their 28 yard line or so. As we start the fourth quarter, Spartans up by a point, 7 6. And Oh, insurance points would be nice. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, since we are in Deerfield, the home of the Chicago Bulls uh, practice <laughs> area, yeah, that was Michael Jordan kind of hang time on that kick. Boy, was that up in the air a long time. Not very far yardage-wise, but way up in the air. Just a 25-yard punt is all. So, AU brings it out, Hancock. With Young is the only setback. Trips to the left, one wide out right. Now, even Young goes away as a wide out right as well on motion. And quarterback will take it himself. Hancock off the left side and breaks the tackle and pushed out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. Should be enough for the first down. That's one way to spread out the defense. Well, you flood that left side with three receivers, send them all, and uh, take everybody away from that side of the field. All of a sudden, Hancock just steps up and takes it that way. He's got three blockers out in front of him. Now, they're not going to give him the first down. Now, actually, the official stopping the clock, and they may bring the chains out. Let's see. Well, again, not that you and I have anywhere to go. <laughs> I know, but gee, let's see. <laughs> By the way, Fonzie Medina came, in, came into this game with 1,087 yards in his brief two-year AU career and had back-to-back 100-yard -back games against Olivet and IBC, but just has 58 yards right now. Going to be about a foot short of the first down for AU this go-around. I think Dave was off by about four inches that time. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but you mentioned that two 200 yard or 100 plus yard games in a row and it had been eight games since anybody for Roar you had done that and, you know again Jim Scott and his uh, program running game has been the bread and butter over the years and uh, really they hadn't been able to do that as well as they have in the years past you know, not that that totally reflects the, the early 0-4 record on the season but Roar you just was not able to do what they normally are, are used to doing second and inches of course AU's defense only allowed IBC 107 yards, 107 total offense last week, and they only had 28 rushing yards. And AU playing a good defensive game today as well, obviously, leading 7-6 in the fourth. Hancock brings him up on second and inches. He's going to throw, lobs it on the left sideline, Silvestri, incomplete. Shotgun for Hancock. Has time, now runs out of time, and he'll try to run it himself, does so to... About the 48 oh, no. yard line where he was hit. I think the officials are going to say he's down at the 48 yard line. I think Trinity came up with the ball, but officials. Well, they have not signaled it. Oh. Two 
two officials said he was down. Now the head linesman came in and overruled both of them. Both officials who spotted the ball, spotted it for AU, the head lineman comes in and goes, no, nope, that's Trinity. Hmm. Trojans are going to take over first and 10 at Aurora U's 48-yard line. But Hancock again as he rolled out to his left. Had about 10 yards in front of him. And it was either just throw the ball away or tuck it in and run out of bounds and cut back to the inside. and was popped pretty hard by the cornerback, and that's when the ball came free. I'm not sure, Mark, whether or not that was a fumble or not. I think maybe it was. But, uh, again, the, the two officials right on top of it said no, dead ball as he was going to the ground. And the head official came over and overruled both of them. I agree with you. I mean, it might wow. even have been a fumble, but I, uh, where does he come to make that call? Well, exactly, because he's way back behind that play. Boy, oh boy. Well, now Trinity has the ball first and 10 at AU's 48. And well, they've got a player down, which... Uh, That's what we're having to lay. We're not able to see the number. He's not far from the Trinity bench, and a lot of players lined up there. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. It couldn't have been the guy who made the hit. But there was a blue jersey flew in there and really gave a shot to Mark Hancock. Man alive. Well, again, well, we have a second here. Mentioned Matt Deegan, of course, the freshman from Naperville North. The safety picked off a pass last week against IBC. Gives him four in his first six games as a Spartan. Leaves the team. As a matter of fact, AU only has ten interceptions all year. He has four of them. That's not too bad. I wouldn't mind picking off another one here. Well, better stages think, of this football. I was going to say, I think he's going to get plenty of opportunity. He's only, passes. Thrown, he's only thrown 43 times here <laughs> so far. How many completions? 18 out of 43. Again, that's not exactly a great percentage. 161 yards for him right now. So those are not great numbers. Yeah, he's 6 for 12 then here in this second half. But the, again, there's been three balls that have been flat out dropped by his receivers just in this half alone. Well, whoever they're taking a look at, obviously this is a, a serious look at the moment. Of course, again, we talk about AU and how young this team is. Once again, just keep in mind, there are eight seniors on the 95 AU roster. The schedule in the next couple of years gets, I don't want to say easier, but in other words, there's not as many Division One AA type of programs as of next year. So it's a much more competitive schedule. We've got a much more experienced team again, you know, veteran team coming back. And uh, next year, I mean, I think there's a good chance that they're going to do a lot next season. Well, Again, we talked about it just at the outset of this broadcast. That even though you started out 0-4, you had some moral victories. And for a young team, those count. Those really do count. A moral victory. You played tough with, with Albion. You played tough with Wheaton. Two teams that are, especially Wheaton, which is a definite playoff team. You uh, played real well with Drake for three quarters. Even though they dominated you through the first half, you weren't down by much. You were still in that game in the third quarter. And... Um, the Hope game was just a, an aberration, I think, in a lot of ways. And you had played pretty well, though, up to that point. And at least got some moral victories out of that and some good experience for some of these young guys. And uh, oh, and this hopefully game that's going to pay dividends down the road. This game is huge. I mean, A, was a chance to win their third in a row and get their third victory. Then you've got two home games remaining. Next Saturday, 1 o'clock, at home against Valpo. And then the following Saturday, the 11th, at home, 1 o'clock, against Evansville. And both those ball clubs are one double A, but they're not, you know, incredible one double A teams. I mean, those games, A, you should be competitive. You sneak another win out of those, you're talking about, you know, getting close to a 500 season after the, the poor start. Well, not even incredible one double A's. You're talking about Valparaiso and Evansville, who haven't played very well at all this year in, the, in comparison to a Drake. Drake has done outstanding exactly. since then. Drake beat Dayton last week. Well, there you go. Shotgun formation for Stark. First down from the AU 48. Stark looks, throws, under throws. Intended receiver Hankton as it went behind him. Incomplete second and ten. You mentioned Valpo there, Mark. I prefer to say Valparaiso just because Valpo just sounds like a, a, a brand of dog food. I <laughs> uh huh. By the way, Dave Byer tells us AU right now 122 total yards, 46 running, 76 passing. Trinity 161 passing. Only 55 on the ground for 216. In other words, don't get Valparaiso a, a little unhappy before the game. <laughs> gotcha. Throw over the middle of the tight end. Coleman made the catch and almost ran through two players. Got the first down at the 32-yard line of AU. And Drew Avery tried to hit him high, and Coleman just bounced off him. 
Wow. Well, Drew coming a, across on the opposite side, a, a key position for him to really lay a hit on the receiver as the ball got there. But Coleman's 6'4", 245, and, and Drew just kind of bounced off him, like you said, and didn't wrap him up. And he got an extra 10 yards out of that play, or at least six or seven, just because Drew was just making a hit instead of making a tackle. So from the 33 of AU, first down. Stark shotgun. Looks left, throws oh. left. He's got Hankton, but it's intercepted. Deegan picked it off. The 25-26 yard line. Deegan did it again. <laughs> Just before he got that, I said, get there. I thought he'd thrown that ball a little more directly to the receiver. He had a man wide open, but he tried to lead him too far and never looked to see Deegan back there playing. Kind of a center fielder position, and Matt just stepped in front and made an easy interception receiver at that point. Didn't even go for the ball. The ball was thrown so far ahead of him. His fifth pick of the year. That was huge. Didn't you just say we something about that? just mentioned it, and he picked it off. AU has the ball first and 10 at their 26. Drips to the left, one to the right. Hancock hands it off Medina straight up the middle and got about four yards and a pretty good line surge that time. 13-15 on a running clock. Tons of time, of course, but just a huge interception don't by use, the Naperville North grad. Don't use the word running and clock in the same sentence here today. <laughs> it's been a crawling clock. <laughs> Those are a contradiction in terms. I believe that was an oxymoron would be the correct uh, terminology. <laughs> Second down and six yards to go. 7-6 Aurora here in the fourth. And the defense made the big play. Pro set. Hancock. Hands it off Medina, and going to get a couple more yards, set up maybe a third and four. Well, we do not want to give them the football back right away. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's an you know, obvious <laughs> understatement, but uh, you've got to come up with something here in third and four. Give the defense a little bit of a rest. So, yes, indeed, a big third and four here. They need this first down. And for field position, too. I mean, let's face it, you punt now, they're going to get the ball back in a real good part of the field. Exactly. Well, it's going to be Silvestri and Draper to the left. Hannigan really is a stand-up wide out on the right. Now Draper in motion right. And Hancock to throw. Let's it go over the middle. Intercepted at the 40-yard line. Through Draper's hands. Right into the hands of the defender, Kintel Avery, the freshman linebacker from Harvey, Louisiana. That hurts. A lot of pressure from the outside coming right at Mark Hancock was Derek Harris, and he knew he was coming, so he had to get rid of it. He got rid of it, threw it a little bit behind Ross Draper, and Ross tried to reach back for it, went right off his hands and right to the linebacker who was standing behind him. He couldn't have tipped it to him any more perfect than that. An easy interception for him, but he had to fall to the ground to catch it as well. First set of downs for Trinity at the AU-40. Shotgun. Stark. Looks. Throws right. A little swing pass to the right side. And, and bouncing off a couple of defenders, the running back finally runs out of bounds. Theo Williams, after a gain, that probably should have been a loss. He ends up getting about three, four yards out of it. Bounced off two guys. Well, the officials are going to back some of the Trinity players up off the sideline a little bit, but uh, that was huge. Brandon Goff hit him around the legs. He bounced off. Matt Deegan hit him as well. No one wrapped him up, and he got four yards out of a play where he should have lost two. Second down, six yards to go. In this spot of the field, those four yards, six yards, I should say, are, are that, that makes a difference here. You're fighting the game of field position right now. Oh, yeah. Shotgun. Two wide outs left. One of those is your big tight end, actually. And Stark. Throws over the middle. Complete. Should be a first down at about the 26-yard line of AU. Jesse Estrada, as he slid to the ground, made the catch. Well, it's getting tough now, especially in that area of the football field. It's so muddy and so wet. Turf has ripped up quite a bit. As we've said many times, you've got conditions like this. The offensive guy has the advantage because he knows where he's going, and Jesse Estrada just ran his pattern, stopped, and Buckley just couldn't react in time. As a matter of fact, Estrada went to the ground to catch that, and Buckley came sliding up to him, trying to keep his balance just to even get near him. Shotgun again. Stark. Rose. Incomplete. Deegan from behind knocked it away from Demetrius Coleman. Incomplete. 
Novak coming around the outside. Almost got the Stark. You know, one of the things I don't like about this is the fact that Stark's uniform is way too clean at this point yeah, of the game. I, uh, I totally agree. For all the passing attempts that he has made, 49. I mean, he's, he's still got a clean jersey. You're exactly right. Which many has not spent a whole lot of time on his back. Second and 10. Shotgun. Looking right. Throws. Incomplete as Avery played a big hit on Lance Stevens right as it went through his hands. Wow. Lance Stevens got up right away and walked out of the field, but he's going, somebody come in for me on seeing stars. Wow. Think that receiver comes across the middle like that and is reached out, stretched out. Try and catch the football. Free safety's just picked their chops and that's one of the things we like to see with Drew. If you're going to hit somebody, hit them hard. Not, you better wrap them up. And boy, he just Damn. labeled them. That was a highlight shot. Third and ten, though. This is the big, big play. They need to stop him right now. Stevens is lucky he didn't get hurt on that. Yeah, That's like the type it. of player you see guys not really get up in there. They have no idea where they're at. At the AU 27, third and ten for Trinity. Shotgun for Stark. Stark. As time rolls over the middle, almost intercepted by Avery. Oh! oh. No! Pass interference. Okay. Avery touched the ball. Well, Kerry Thompson stopped, started to come back to the ball, and Drew Avery came around the other side, came from behind him and to his right. Got a hand on the ball, but the official said there was contact made around the legs where they were both kind of diving for the football. I'm not, you know, that's not a catchable ball exactly by the receiver. Not to him, it was more to Avery than it was to him in the end, and uh, that's just a judgment call by the official whether or not that's interference. There was contact, but it's kind of inconsequential at that point. Well, Drew gets to go for the ball. He was going to touch the ball. Absolutely. I mean, plain and simple. Well, but that's a first down pass interference call. First down at the AU 13-yard line. Backs in the eye. Under center this time is Stark. Hands it off up the middle. Nothing there. Maybe a yard falling forward for Kerry Thompson. Kevin Watson just stuffed things right up the middle along with R.J. Herb. Just under 11 minutes now, Mark, to go in this game. Spartans up 7-6. At the very least, they are definitely in field goal range at the 12-yard line. We've seen... Melvitz kick a couple long ones today, so to speak, a 43-yarder and a 31-yarder for their six points. Two wide receivers left. Shotgun, second down and nine. Stark in trouble. Watson's on him and sacks him back at the 20. Watson the sack to the 20-yard line. Well, there you go. For example, you just can't cover everybody when you bring more than one, two guys on the blitz. And that time, everybody seemed like it was coming. Kevin Watson right up the middle, avoided Kerry Thompson trying to set a block on him, leaped over him and just wrapped up the quarterback. They need to get to the three-yard line. They're back at the 20, and it's third down. Mm, yeah, kind of a big play. Well, Trinity we, breaks the huddle. I was going to say, we talked about some of the things that were down in the field. A lot of geese apparently matriculate around this place when there's not football being played. That gave it a whole new meaning to dropping the quarterback. That was a big one. <laughs> third down and long. He rolls out left. Looks, he'll try to take it himself. Nope, he's going to throw, and it's going to be complete. First and goal at the two to Hankton. What a nice play. That was just a beautiful throw on the run, rolling to his left, going across his body and a bullet, but I'm not sure he wasn't across the, the line of scrimmage when he released that football. Boy, I'd like to see that on film. Give me both. I thought he was just going to flat out run that football and then threw it. And, uh, that was Boy. a close one. If he got rid of it, he got rid of it just in time. He had to be right there. Well, as it is, first and goal at about the, well, they put them on the one. Well, that's that's about the half yard line. 9.28 to go, and they're going to talk it over. Timeout called. We'll take a break. 9.28 to go, 7.6 AU. Back after this on KKD. Well, after the timeout, Trinity comes out with a first and goal from the one. Well, you and I both just had big size, kind of disgusted by 
some of the things that have happened here. Backs in the eye, quarterback Stark under center. Quarterback sneak, touchdown. They're going to go for two. They have taken the lead. At now 12-7 for the time being. Well, you almost have to. Yep, no reason not to. They'll go for two. AU has led all the way until now. Shotgun formation and the two-point conversion. Stark. Looks right, throws right. Little dump pass to the running back. And Buckley knocked him out before he got in. So nice job as they tried to get Theo Williams in. But Buckley came up to make the play and push him out of bounds just before the pylon. So it stays 12-7. to The lead for Trinity, 9-17 to go. Kickoff after this timeout. We get set for the kick. Natividad, the deep man. Now the Spartans need to play a little catch-up. They've got 9.25 to work with, down 12-7. And the Tividad from the 14. The 20, 25, 30, 35, 38-yard line. Another nice return by Natividad. Our rookie got hit pretty hard at the end of that play, and he's not going to be getting up real quick. That was Shannon Hester who hit him, but, uh, boy, it's so easy for you and I up here where we can see the whole field. I just wanted him to cut to the outside because he had all kinds of running room to the outside, and he never made that move. He came back to the inside and took a hit, but uh, we could see the outside was wide open. Chris Loren runs out there. You know, actually, you can tell how muddy it is when, you're, when your trainers run out to the injured player, and they're, they're walking like they're on glass, <laughs> exactly. trying not to fall down themselves. So Natividad has four returns for 86 yards right now. So he's done a fine job. Again, about 21 or 22 yards of return. That was Chris Loren and Chris Heights, one of the student assistants. Well, he brought a whole group today. All the trainers are here. But Ricky's all right, and he's on the sidelines now. First and 10. Hancock, hands off. Brett Tucker, excuse me, I did it again. Brett Runkle breaks a couple tackles. Right, a nice hard run. Got about eight, nine yards out of that one. You know, maybe you should keep doing that every time yeah, you I call know. him Tucker. He hits a good run, and that was just to put your head down and go. Cradle the ball with both hands, no fumbles, and just kept his head and shoulders forward, and he kept driving. He got nine yards out of a play where he was hit after the initial line of scrimmage. So, second down, short two yards to go. Now they're on their own 47 for the Spartans. Hancock. Hands it off Medina right side. Hurdles the defense and should get the first down. About the 49-yard line. Should get a fresh set of downs depending on the mark. Well, he's going to have it definitely by the length of the football. 8.28 remaining. Did you ask Dave Byer before you said definitely? Well, I was going to ask Dave how much how much did he get the first down by. Well, all right. <laughs> Got to ask the expert. But they don't measure those kind of things. First down indeed. Just shy of the 49. On that uh, failed two-point conversion attempt by Trinity, credit again not only Buckley but Matt Deegan to just shut the corner off the swing pass, and he was just trying to put the pylon and only got to about the one. And that could be a big PAT down the line here. And the option play, belly fake, and actually it was a belly handoff. As it turned out, I thought maybe Hancock had kept it, but did hand it off and really only got about two yards or so on the carry up the middle. These guys are so conscientious about not fumbling right now. It was Kenny that took that handoff. He not only took the ball, but he took uh, Hancock's arm with him. When he reached to grab the ball, Mark went flying with him into the pile. Well, and now it's a Trinity Trojan who is slow in getting up. It'll be their training staff. Who comes out to take a look right at midfield? I'm going to say not slow, Mark. He's not moving. Face down to that muddy turf and not really moving much at all. What's well, one of those days? Now well, the player who was slow to get up, Keith on Holmes, 5'11", 275, a junior from Chicago. Defensive lineman. He'll have to come off for a play, but looks to be okay right now. As a matter of fact, he's going to kind of jog off to the sideline. Second down about eight. 
Right at midfield, Spartans have the second down. 7.47 to go. 12-7 Trinity. Again, it's very dark and overcast. All I know is this game is closing in on a three-hour mark, and there's still seven and a half minutes to play. Second and eight. Hancock, play action, throws over the middle, wide open, Bauman, complete. First down to the 36-yard line at Trinity. Oh, a huge play that time. Derek Bauman got the ball in position to catch it that time. He took a pretty good shot afterwards. He's going to stagger off the field a little bit. Boy, he's a little queasy. Did his job, though. He held on to the ball. Now they are going to escort him off to the sideline. Boy, hey, this, this has been a hard-hitting game. Well, that's what I mean, muddy, hard-hitting. At the 36, Hancock brings him up. Don't forget the darkness. <laughs> I know. Looking. It's going to be the handoff on the delay to Medina, but all he's going to do is get about two yards before he's knocked down to the ground. So they get to the 34-yard line of Trinity on second and eight. Well, he keeps this up. Then. One Spartan assistant, Troy Johnson, just mentioned this is Spartan's first night game. I think he's right. <laughs> Got a point there. Not much longer it will be. Not too bad there are no lights. Slot left is Draper. Now he goes in motion right. Hancock to throw. Swing pass to Medina. Makes the catch in stride of the 30. About the 28-yard line. So going to be about a yard or two shy of the first, but third and short. Kind of right, right in stride that time. Yep, timeout AU. Third and two from the Trinity 28. Big, big play indeed, so don't call time. We'll take time as well. 6.09 to go. 12-7 Trinity back after this. Well, here we go. Big, big play. Third and two from the 28 of Trinity. They need to get this first down. It's certainly four down territory anyway, but let's get it right now. Pro set. Hancock. He got him to jump. He hands it up to Medina and he might have gotten the first down anyway, but I think he drew them off sides with a good little count that time by Hancock. Dave Byer just passing along the numbers here. Hancock 10 of 17 for 96 yards. And that might have been his biggest completion, even <laughs> though it wasn't a pass. Drew right. Trinity off sides indeed for the first down. That with some huge yardage he just gained right there. Third and short. Trojans very aggressive, all hyped up, and a little longer count by Hancock and got him to jump. So a first and ten, slot left, two running backs. Hand off to the slot man, Runkle, and he's not going to do much. Got maybe a yard. Not a whole lot there that time at all, a lot of blue jerseys. Second down and nine yards to go. That's tough now because you've got to get this first down. A field goal doesn't do you much good. You've got to get a touchdown. Absolutely. Slot left is Draper, one running back. And Hancock, straight drop, sets, throws to the end zone. He's got him. Draper's wide open, touchdown! Oh, baby! Yeah. How did he get that wide open on that play? He was all alone in the end zone. Boy, they sent somebody else to the middle. I didn't catch it with this big pole in the... In the way that we've got here, they sent another receiver to the middle, and he looked that way and looked that way, and they thought he was going to get it for sure, and the free safety just floated over towards the middle of the field, and Draper just kept going straight down. 23 yards, touchdown strike. AU calls time to set up their PAT because, let's face it, they need this two-point conversion. They now lead it. Spartans 13, Trinity 12 with 5.08 to go. But you want to get this, too, to be up by a field goal. So they want to talk it over and make sure that they don't mess this up. We'll keep it here. As Rory U comes back for the touchdown to take the lead on a very nice pass by Hancock as well. And just as important, they ran four minutes and 15 seconds off the clock to do that. Exactly. Actually, the clock shows 5.08 remaining. Kevin Young going to come in. The Tividad's coming in. Medina... Matter of fact, Medina will come in and Young will come out, so they make a last-minute change out of that. So as they break the huddle, the Tividad to the right, Hannigan the tight end to the right, Silvestri left side. It's going to be Draper a slot left, and Medina the lone running back. Hancock fakes the handoff, rolls left, throws left corner, tipped and incomplete. 
Well, Sylvester that was there. Problem was, Draper was running that way, and I think he brought his defender along for the ride who ended up making the play. I was just going to say, they flooded that left side with a couple too many receivers. There were three guys over there eventually at the time the ball got there. And it was not even the man who was guarding Sylvester who came up to knock that ball away. Well, here we go. We are down to 5.08 with a 13-12 AU one-point lead kickoff after this on KKD. Here we go for the kickoff as Ross Draper tees it up. Draper averaging 30 yards a punt now. He's had four catches for 54 yards and a touchdown as a receiver. And now he's going to kick off. That 30 yards punting average, a little deceiving. He had 40 yard average in his first two kicks, and the other ones have been trying to pin him inside the, the 10 yard line. Exactly. He's done well. High short kick this time, but bounces where we picked up at about the 14. The returner on the right side. To about the 23-yard line or so, and that's where Trinity will get things started after the return by one of their wide receivers, Lance Stevens. Well, we're under five minutes to go, and AU by a point. Can they hold him here? Keep him out of field goal range. They've already kicked a couple of field goals today, and we certainly know that their kicker has good range. Then again, they are going into that wind. Slight breeze out of the north. Just enough to change the trajectory on some football, some passes, and some, some throws, which, of course, are the same thing. Passes and kicks is what I meant to say. <laughs> well, if Tegan wants to pick off another one, I wouldn't mind. Shotgun for Stark. Looks, has time, rolls right. Little dump pass again over the middle of the uh -oh. running back. Complete, has the first down yard. You can get almost to the 40 wow. yard line as Theo Williams had a lot of running room that time. Boy, they just threw it underneath and uh, just a, a great job on this side. Brandon Koff one on one with the receiver. And he was pretty much taken out of that play. Well, we're already in trouble field position-wise here. That's the 50th pass of the ball game. Actually, 52nd pass of the ball game for John Stark. Byers going to have to flip the page. First down. They call it about the 38-yard line. And shotgun handoff up the middle to Williams, and... He's going to get about five yards out of that one or so, as he had a good hard run there. He was stopped up, but he still kept the legs moving. Well, again, you got to wrap him up. Drew Avery laid a pretty hard hit on him once he was stood up, but he never grabbed him, and uh, he just kept squirming and squirming and lunged forward, and they're going to give him that extra yard and a half progress when he lunged forward after his momentum pretty much was stopped, but you know he didn't stop. Good well, job by Theo Williams. He got about six yards out of that, and it should have only been about three. More importantly, though, on a running play, they're running the clock. It's now inside four and a half minutes. Gain of six. Shotgun handoff again to Williams off the right side, and he only got about two more yards out of it to set up a third and two, but it continues to run that clock now inside of four minutes. Wow. So in a sense, they're doing the Spartans a favor by running the football. I mean, you can give them a couple of first downs yet. They're still not anywhere near field goal range. If they want to take two minutes to get every 10 yards, that's fine by the Spartans. Well, they're trying to keep the defense a little bit honest here and play the run a little bit, but uh, they are hoping things would be a little more wide open than that. They only get eight yards out of those two running plays, and like you said, lost a lot of time. Third down and a long two. Backs in the eye. Hand off again up the middle. And that second effort again by Kerry Thompson probably got him the first down. Let's see, is the unpallet going to be pretty close, but I think they have it. Dave Byer says they have it. And, and they're going to stop the clock to measure with now 3.15 to go. But again, three runs in a row. I'm really surprised by that. Well, then again, maybe they are that confident they're going to move it down the field. They just want to make sure Roy U has no time left to, to run anything. I don't know. 